Dual Lives 11 Nazi Leaders with Unexpected Professions The Nazi regime, led by Adolf Hitler, is synonymous with some of the gravest atrocities of the 20th century. Yet, many of its key figures started in professions that starkly contrast their later roles. This piece uncovers the early, unexpected careers of 11 Nazi leaders, including Adolf Hitler himself, revealing the deeply unsettling dualities of their lives. Number 1. Heinrich Himmler, the unlikely farmer turned SS leader. Heinrich Himmler, born in Munich on October 7, 1900, initially pursued a seemingly innocuous career in agriculture, focusing specifically on poultry farming. His early life was far removed from the horrors he would later perpetrate. Himmler's interest in agronomy led him to study agriculture at Munich Technical High School. However, his life took a dramatic and dark turn as he became deeply involved in the Nazi party. Himmler's transformation from a chicken farmer to the architect of the Holocaust and leader of the SS, Schutzstaffel, is a stark and shocking example of the extreme divergence from a simple, rural life to one of the most heinous figures in modern history. Number 2. Joseph Goebbels, the Propaganda Minister's Literary Ambitions Joseph Goebbels, born on October 29, 1897, in Raid, Germany, had literary aspirations in his youth. He studied literature and history at the University of Heidelberg and even earned a PhD in German literature. Goebbels wrote a semi-autobiographical novel, Michael, a German destiny in diary form, published in 1923, which reflected his early idealistic and romantic views. However, his failure to achieve success as a writer led him to the path of politics. As the propaganda minister for the Nazi party, Goebbels used his skill with words to manipulate public opinion and spread the Nazi ideology, becoming one of the most notorious figures in the regime. His journey from a struggling writer to a mastermind of Nazi propaganda highlights a disturbing pivot from creative pursuits to the dark world of manipulation and deceit. Number 3. Reinhard Heydrich, the Butcher of Prague's Musical Side Reinhard Heydrich, born on March 7, 1904, in Halle, Germany, showed a profound talent for music from an early age, particularly excelling as a violinist. His passion for music was deeply ingrained, and he was known for his exceptional skill with the violin. This musical inclination presented a stark contradiction to his later life as one of the most feared and brutal figures of the Nazi regime. Heydrich played a central role in the SS, Schutzstaffel, and was a key architect of the Holocaust, orchestrating the final solution with chilling efficiency. His involvement in the extermination of millions stands in harrowing contrast to the sensitivity often associated with musicians, making his story one of the most disturbing paradoxes of the Nazi era. Number 4. Albert Speer, the architect behind the Nazi grandeur. Albert Speer, born on March 19, 1905, in Mannheim, Germany, began his career as an architect, deeply influencing the aesthetic of the Third Reich with his monumental and imposing architectural designs. Speer's association with Adolf Hitler began in the early 1930s, and he quickly rose to prominence, becoming the chief architect for the Nazi party. His works included the design of the Reich Chancellery and the plans for the reconstruction of Berlin. However, Speer's legacy is tainted by his role as the Minister of Armaments and War Production during World War II, where he employed forced labor in armament factories. His architectural prowess, once celebrated, became a testament to the grandiose and oppressive vision of the Nazi regime. Speer was convicted of war crimes and crimes against humanity at the Nuremberg Trials, highlighting the moral compromises and consequences of his professional achievements. Number 5. Hermann Göring, from decorated pilot to Nazi leader. Hermann Göring, born on January 12, 1893, in Rosenheim, Germany, first gained recognition as a decorated fighter pilot during World War I. He was a highly respected ace, known for his bravery and skills in the air, and was awarded the prestigious Poor Lumerite, commonly known as the Blue Max Göring's role as a war hero initially earned him significant admiration and respect. However, this esteem was dramatically overshadowed by his later actions as one of the top leaders of the Nazi party. Göring held several high-ranking positions, including the commander of the Luftwaffe, German Air Force, and president of the Reichstag. His involvement in key aspects of the Nazi regime, from the establishment of the Gestapo to his part in the Holocaust, irreparably tarnished his legacy, 
transforming him from a celebrated war hero to a key perpetrator of some of the worst atrocities of the 20th century. Number 6. Julius Stryker, From Educator to Propagandist Julius Stryker, born on February 12, 1885, in Flainhausen, Germany, began his career far from the world of political extremism as a primary school teacher. His transition from a profession centered on shaping young minds to becoming the publisher of Der Sturmer, one of the most virulently anti-Semitic publications of the Nazi era, marks a shocking and dark transformation. Stryker's newspaper played a significant role in spreading anti-Semitic propaganda, fueling the hatred that underpinned the Holocaust. His shift from education to propagating hate highlights a disturbing example of how an individual can become deeply involved in spreading destructive and hateful ideologies. Stryker's actions led to his eventual conviction for crimes against humanity at the Nuremberg Trials, illustrating the severe consequences of his transition from a teacher to a key figure in the Nazi propaganda machine. Number 7. Rudolf Hess, The Flight That Puzzled the World Rudolf Hess, born on April 26, 1894, in Alexandria, Egypt, was not only the deputy Führer to Adolf Hitler but also an avid aviation enthusiast. His passion for flying culminated in one of World War II's most enigmatic incidents, his solo flight to Scotland on May 10, 1941. Hess flew from Augsburg, Germany, in a Messerschmitt Bf 110 aircraft, intending to negotiate peace with the United Kingdom. His unexpected landing near Glasgow and subsequent capture by British authorities baffled both the Nazi leadership and the Allies. This audacious and unsanctioned mission, shrouded in mystery, led to his imprisonment in the UK for the remainder of the war. The flight's purpose and Hess's motivations remain a topic of debate and speculation, adding a bizarre chapter to the history of the Nazi regime. Number 8. Walther Funk, Financial Architect of the Third Reich Born on August 18, 1890, in Trakenen, East Prussia, Walther Funk rose to prominence in the Nazi hierarchy as the Reich Minister for Economic Affairs and later as the President of the Reichsbank. Before his involvement in the Nazi regime, Funk was a respected economist and journalist, working for various newspapers and financial publications. His expertise in finance and economics played a critical role in shaping the economic policies of Nazi Germany. Funk was instrumental in the economic exploitation and plundering of wealth from occupied territories and the assets of persecuted groups, particularly the Jews. His financial strategies were pivotal in funding the Nazi war machine, directly linking him to the regime's atrocities. Funk's deep involvement in the economic aspects of the Nazi regime led to his conviction for war crimes and crimes against humanity at the Nuremberg Trials. Number 9. Adolf Eichmann, From Salesman to Architect of the Holocaust Adolf Eichmann, born on March 19, 1906, in Zollingen, Germany, initially worked as a traveling salesman for the Vacuum Oil Company, a subsidiary of Standard Oil. Before his infamy as a key orchestrator of the Holocaust, Eichmann's early career seemed unremarkable. However, his entry into the Nazi party in 1932 marked the beginning of his dark trajectory. Eichmann quickly rose through the ranks due to his organizational skills and ideological commitment. By 1941, he had become the head of the Reich Main Security Office's department responsible for Jewish affairs. His bureaucratic expertise was crucial in planning and executing the logistics of mass deportation and extermination of Jews across Europe. Eichmann's role in the final solution was so pivotal that he is often referred to as the architect of the Holocaust. His capture, trial, and execution in Israel in 1962 brought some level of justice for his heinous crimes. Number 10. Hans Frank, the lawyer turned Nazi governor general. Hans Frank, born on May 23, 1900, in Karlsruhe, Germany, was a lawyer who played a significant role in the Nazi regime. He joined the Nazi party early on and became Adolf Hitler's personal legal advisor. Frank's legal expertise was perverted to serve the Nazi ideology, particularly in justifying the regime's racial laws and policies. As the governor-general of occupied Poland, he oversaw the administration of the general government, where he implemented and enforced the brutal policies of the Nazi occupation. Under his rule, millions of Jews and Poles suffered and died. 
His role in these atrocities was so substantial that he was tried and found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity at the Nuremberg Trials. He was executed in 1946. Number 11. Adolf Hitler, the artist who became a tyrant. Adolf Hitler's early aspirations of becoming an artist stand in stark contrast to the heinous legacy he would later create. Born on April 20, 1889, in Braunheimen, Austria, Hitler twice applied to the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts in 1907 and 1908, failing to gain admission both times. His rejection from the Academy and subsequent struggles in Vienna were pivotal in his early life, with Hitler later blaming his failures on the institution's Jewish professors. Despite this setback, he continued to pursue art, selling paintings and postcards. However, his artistic endeavors were overshadowed by his growing interest in politics and the anti-Semitic ideology that would later define his rule as the Führer of Nazi Germany. Hitler's transformation from a failed artist to the dictator responsible for World War II and the Holocaust remains one of history's most dramatic and devastating turns.